Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about how to create custom floating toolbar that you have probably seen on many other websites. So the first thing that we need is the plugin GreenShift. This is a free plugin that you can find in the search tab here and then you can install. After you have installed it, there will be available reusable templates and you can add from here a new template. So let's call it custom floating toolbar. And now we need to create a container for our toolbar. We are typing backslash container and here is the block. Also, you can add it by clicking on this button. So let's say we want to create a toolbar with three icons that will be permanently on the bottom part of our website, like here. For this reason, we need to enable the option which is called CSS Grid here. And then let's choose a three columns. And as you can see, there are three equal columns. Now let's add the first icon. So here we have a block called icon box. Our icon is too big, so let's make it smaller from here. Also, you can change its color and add a link to this icon. So let's choose this color and then you can add a link if you want. So here I will add more icons by duplicating the one that I have already created. Like this. And now we need to add a style to our toolbar so that it will be distinguished from our content. We'll add a color and also a shadow. What we need to do is to click on the container itself and select the parent element or select it in the navigator. So let's now add a color. For example, let's choose white color. And also shadow, uh, you can choose both from the ones that are already set or you can use your own. So since our toolbar will be located on the bottom of our website, we will need to add a shadow on the top. So that's why we will add a negative value for white like this. We should also add spacing from here. Like this. So now we'll add to all of them. And this is how it looks like. This is our final result and then we'll publish it. And now we need to make sure that the toolbar is at the bottom of our website all the time. To do this, we just need to go to advanced and then we click on position and we choose fixed. To make the container to be located on the whole width of the screen, we need to put zero values on the left and right, like this. And we'll put a value of zero on the bottom. In our case, the container is a bit overlapped by the panel of WordPress, but this won't be visible on the website. So now we need to click on update and then go back to the admin. As 
As we can see, our template has its own shortcut. We will copy it. And if you are using a classic theme, in my case, I am using Rehab. You need to go to Appearance and then Widgets here. And to add the shortcut to one of the widgets. In this case, it doesn't matter in which widget exactly you will add it. The important thing is that this widget is displayed on the page. So I will add it to bottom custom footer area here. So now I will add custom HTML here and then put our short code inside. And now I will save it. Now, if I open the website from here, I can see that the toolbar I have just created is working very well. In this case, the toolbar is uh, in the footer is very rarely used on the desktop mode. It's usually used on mobile version. So we'll now edit this block. So here we need to go to advanced here and then responsive and custom CSS. And we need to click on height on desktop, tablet and landscape mobile. Then we click on update in order to save the changes. And as we can see now, it has disappeared. But if you go to a mobile version, the toolbar is appearing. If you're using a block theme, for example, block press, Theme. It's a free theme that you can also install on WordPress website. As you can see, there is no this widget because block themes are containing blocks only. And in order to add the toolbar, we need to go to editor. So here you can directly add our templates. And here we can find custom floating toolbar and that's all. Now you can find the container on the left side here. But let's go back to our toolbar and see what else we can do. So for example, we can do the toolbar to be not on the footer but on the left or right side. So we are selecting it and now we want to make it consist of one column only instead of three columns. We will do this from here and we'll add already set width for example 80 pixels like this. Now we go to position and delete the value on the left. This one. And we'll add a value of 100 pixels for the bottom one. And this is what we get. And this is what we get. And now we click on update in order to save the changes. And as we can see, everything is working well. Now this button is overlapping a bit our toolbar. So let's raise it a little bit. Also, we can locate it just in the middle of the page. So we go to position in advanced position. And then we remove the value on the bottom and add a value of 50% on the top. Like this. Now in CSS transform, we will do the opposite. We will add minus 50% for white. And now as you can see that the toolbar is in the middle of the right side and 
it doesn't depend on the number of icons. And finally, we'll click on update. And as we can see here, everything works very well. In our case, the icons on the toolbar are just links to some pages. But let's see how to add something more complex, like for example, some pop-up windows as on Gearbest website. So in order to do so, we have a block which is called sliding panel. But first, just to test it, I will add here a spacing so that the toolbar is visible all the time. And then before publishing it, I will set back the spicing to their uh, initial position. So let's add a block which is called sliding panel. Sliding panel is a block based on button blocks. This is how it looks like. And if you want to disable the background, we need to go to background and in background color, we need to set zero transparency here we set zero transparency like this now we go to the button and add a color so let's choose this one so here I will select a line center and this is what we get. Now we can choose on how our pop-up panel is going to look like. There are several options. If you are using a fixed toolbar, then you can use both block and pop-up position. Let's check now how it works. So we select block, then we click on left. And now we click on open panel. And here we can add whatever you want. For example, you can add other blocks or several blocks, or you can add, for example, text and so on. So let's add just text. We click on paragraph. We can also add a cover of our panel and a spacing as well. This way you can distinguish the, the text from the bottom. And uh, this is how it looks by default, but we can add also a spacing of let's say 10 or even more. We'll add also a text cover here. And that's all. Then we click on close panel. And then we click on update. Oh, I forgot to set back the position of the container to zero. So let's go back and uh, set it back. Okay, so update. And as we can see now, our panel is working very well like this. Also, I need to mention that if you have any issues with the overlapping of your toolbar by other blocks, you can just add a Z index of five nines or something around that here. So let's say nine, 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 nine. And if you have any issues with your panel, you can find here index panel as well. And also they are available width and height, both in absolute and relative values. So apart from using a block position, we can also use a pop-up position here. This is how it looks like and a panel that will be appearing on the left or right side like this. 
So let's now see how it works in practice. We can set back the background to white color from here. Then enable pop-up here. And let's add here login form, for example. Now we'll set back the position to zero from here. And now if we click on this button, here will appear a pop-up window for login. Block login form is available in premium edition. You can check all the editions here in GreenShift. For example, login form block is available in query section here. Uh, you can also check the demo of all blocks on GreenShift website here. And there are many blocks here that you can check as well if you want. Now let's go back to our addition and check on more additions that will be helpful for our toolbar. The one that we are going to use is called animations and it allows to create different kinds of animations. So we will now put our container in another one with animations. So for this reason, we click on the icon of the block and select animation container here. We need to set absolute position of our block and then to add an absolute position to our parent block as well. So we click on position, we click on fixed and then we set a value of zero on the right side and 300 on the top one like this. Then we need to build our animation and to add a value of 100 in translate X here. This means that the container itself will be moved on 100% and will be out of sight. Then we need to choose a trigger of our animation. You can find it here in trigger option. Scroll trigger is selected by default and we will set a trigger start 200. This means that once the user scrolls 200 pixels from the beginning of the page, our animation will appear. Then we click on update and let's check how it works. So by default, our container is hidden, but once I scroll 200 pixels, the container is appearing and then it disappears back like this. Here we can set also another uh, duration or we can select another ease type. As we can see, everything works very well. We'll learn more about addition animations in our next videos. This is all for today. Have a good day and see you in the next video.